Hello, hello everyone, and welcome to a new video. This time we are going to be discussing my top five commons and uncommons for Caltime Limited. I know you're all very excited, this new set, lots of Vikings, lots of snow, lots of exciting stuff, but what if you're trying to build a deck for Limited and you're not quite sure what's good, what's bad? Well, this is why I'm here to help. Now, firstly, Got to get the disclaimer out of the way this list is just my opinion feel free to disagree with it i'm not the greatest limited player in the entire world you're welcome to your own opinion if you want to say that fearless pup is number one i won't disagree i mean just look at that flavor text right secondly i'm only going to be judging rares rather i'm not going to be judging rares and mythics i'm only going to be judging commons and uncommons you probably don't need me to tell you that the rare board wipe Doomscar or the Mythic Gods are going to be pretty good at Limited. You probably know that already. We're going to be sticking to the meat of Limited, the commons and uncommons. The cards you'll open much more often than the rares and mythics. Okay, at number five, we have Path to the World Tree. Now, you might think, oh, of course Don would pick this, but hear me out, hear me out. Fetching a basic land? This is better than it looks in Caltime. There are snow basics. You don't get very many, but you will get some. And being able to chew to them out of your deck so that you can activate all your snow abilities and all your cards that care about the number of snow permanents you control get a bit better, that's quite relevant. Secondly, there's a lot of treasure in this set and a lot of jewel lands. So activating that ability isn't as far off as it seems. And if you do, it's an awful lot of value. You gain a bit of life, they lose a bit of life, you draw some cards, you kill one of their creatures, you get a creature yourself. Field is usually quite grindy, and if you can activate that, you should be well ahead. And plus, you know, it's the kind of card I would pick. And at number four, we have Poison the Cup. Now, there's a lot of good removal in Caltime Limited, just looking at the over the set, but this one is my favourite. First of all, even if you ignore Fortell, You've got three mana, instant, destroy target creature. Reminds you a lot of murder, right? Murder, it was an extremely good card in Limited. It still is. The fact that this spell has the upside of being able to foretell it, which not only lets you scry two, which is great card selection later, also potentially lets you splash it as it only costs a single black to cast out of exile, just makes this card so much better. At number three, we have Clarion Spirit. Uh, this card seems great to me. I mean, you get a 2-mana two 2-2, two -two, that's alright. But whenever you cast your second spell, you get a 1-1 one -one flying spirit token. That's amazing. You can really set this up with clever plays, or, or even just careful sequencing, to get the most of it. Perhaps turn 2, instead of playing this, you foretell something. Then turn 3, play Clarion Spirit. Unforetell your card for 1 or 0 mana if you manage to open one of those. You get a spirit immediately, and your opponent is still faced with the threat that you might get more in the future. Plus, these aren't just 1-1 one, one normal tokens, these tokens fly, which means they're quite good at chipping in damage early, and they're also pretty good at jumping in front of whatever huge giant you need to chump block to preserve your life token. Big plus for Carrion Spirit, the only negative being it doesn't really draw any cards. And at number two, we have, in my opinion, the best common in the set, you could argue Demon Bolt, but for me, this is the best common, Sarulf's Packmate. Let's have a look at what we get. It's a 4-mana 3-3, three, three, and it comes in, you draw a card, and it has Foretell as well. What's not to like? It's a grindy format sealed. Having creatures that replace themselves is incredibly strong. As I mentioned earlier, there's a ton of good removal in this set. Your opponent is likely to be able to trade their cards for your creatures by removing them. You will get ahead if you have creatures like this that draw cards. Plus, this creature also really helps avoid mana screw. Let's say you get stuck on two lands in your opening hand. You can turn two, foretell it, turn three, cast it from foretell, and you get an extra draw to try and find that third land. Very strong, in my opinion. And before we go on to my number one pick, I had a couple of honourable mentions that nearly made the list, but not quite. My first honourable mention is Shimmer Drift Veil. The main reason this didn't make the list is. Well, it's just a bit boring. It's very good. It's a snow land in a set that cares about snow lands. It can fix your mana into whatever you need. But at the end of the day, it's just a land. Every deck will want to play this. 
not getting colour screwed is, is amazing. Who doesn't like not getting colour screwed? Who doesn't like making snow mana? This also enables multicolour shenanigans. Perhaps you can crack your world tree, path to the world tree with this. Do something silly like that. Card is just incredible. And my other honourable mentions are going to be all of the other great removal spells at common. We've got Pink Serpent, Bounding Gold, Demon Bolt. There's a lot of great removal here. I mainly didn't want my list to be top five removal cards in Caltime. So I limited myself to just Poison the Cup. But these are all excellent and you should play all of them. Demon Bolt does miss a few of the giants in blue and red and some of the big green creatures. So it's not as good as it might appear. It's still very good. Bounding Gold is great. There are a few creatures with abilities, triggered abilities that it doesn't really work against. Feed the Serpent gets rid of your problems, no worries. It is, however, four mana and hard to splash. But these are all excellent. And finally, my number one choice for commons and uncommons in Cal Time is Vega the Watcher. Oh my goodness, this card is incredible. Let's see what you get. Three mana, it is two colours, so it's harder to play, but you get a 2-2 flying, that's respectable, and then you get this line of text. Whenever you cast a spell from anywhere other than your hand, draw a card. Now that's going to mostly be for Talon Limited, although there are a few other ways of doing it too, but that's amazing. Limited is grindy. Repeatedly drawing cards will bury your opponent and allow you to beat them in card advantage. Let's say a typical curve, you foretell something on turn two, play this card on turn three, and you give your opponent a really tough choice. If they don't kill Vega immediately, chances are you can cast your foretelled card next turn, draw a card, which will draw you into more cards with foretell, which will draw you more cards, and the advantage snowballs and snowballs from there. Plus it's a 2-2 flying, you know, it can chip in a few points here and there. Generally, when you've got a card that gives you loads of card advantage, you don't want to be trying to race. So bear that in mind, but you're probably not going to be blocking with this unless you have to, so you're pretty free to get in for a few points. And that is my top five list. What did you think? What did you think I got right? Do you think I was horribly wrong on anything? I would love to know your thoughts. Do let us know what are your top five or even your top common and uncommon for Cal Time Limited. Thanks for listening. Bye.